How y'all doing? It's Pawpaw again. <laughs> uh, I got a tremendous amount of response when I talked about how my uh, my well switch crapped out on me and I was having to repair my well and I was describing how the well switch worked and I had a tremendous amount of response people asking me could I go further and explain exactly how to set up a well so for those of you that already know this information this may be pretty boring for you because I'm going to talk about this at a very elementary level uh, I want to explain this where anybody can understand it if you're thinking about going out and being a homesteader want to go out and live off the grid uh, using your solar power and all that kind of neat stuff which I love uh, one of the things you have to be concerned about is your water supply and, and how are you going to have water and whether it be a spring that you run a pump in or whether it be a, a well you got to get the water to your house somehow or, or another so let me just go in here and I'm just going to explain in, in easy layman's terms how this works okay now I don't have a lot there this video is not going to have a lot of pretty pictures and all that so I'll be right back You know, I said that they ain't going to have a lot of pretty pictures. Maybe I can find something to sneak in here. We'll find out. Anyway, let me just go through some of the pieces that you need in order to uh, plumb your well and, and uh, hook up your well system where you get that water that's down in the ground up here into your shower. Okay? Uh, let me go through this real briefly. You're going to need a pump, a check valve, a manifold, a pressure gauge, a pressure switch, a pressure tank, a spigot, pressure relief valve, pipe and miscellaneous fittings, and option, uh, if it's a submersible pump, you need waterproof connectors and a torque arrestor. Now let me go through these one at a time and, and tell you what I'm talking about. Your pump. Your pump is either going to be down in the well a couple of feet off the bottom of your well and that's what we call a submersible and if you do have a submersible pump you're going to need some waterproof connectors that's where the wiring is actually the connections are actually in a plastic tube it's got these little little uh, ends that screw onto it to where your actual connection is watertight or waterproof and uh, protects it from um, uh, oh, protects it from, uh, well, water getting on it. Also, you would need a torque arrestor. And what a torque arrestor is, it's a, uh, a rubber item. It's got two hose clamps on it, and when you push it down, push it like this, it expands and the idea is that you put this on the pipe that's coming up from the pump you put this down here so that when your pump kicks in this torque arrestor prevents the pump from twisting real hard on your pipe itself it's uh it keeps you from twisting out of your fittings or breaking a fitting by absorbing some of that torque okay a check valve Once you got your water up out of the well and going over here to your to your uh, pressure tank and all that, you need a check valve because you don't want water running back down into your well, contaminate your well. Say you had something go wrong maybe up here in the house or anyway, you don't want water backwashing back down into your well. You need a check valve. Okay, a manifold. 
A manifold is nothing more than an object that allows you to connect a whole bunch of things to it. Just like an exhaust manifold on a car, an intake manifold, you know, you got all these things that can bolt onto that manifold. And what we use a manifold for is a, is a location for our pressure gauge, a pressure switch, a pressure tank, a spigot, and a pressure relief valve. The idea being that this is one central location. So, your pressure gauge is optional, but it's nice to be able to read how much pressure is in your line at any given time. And it's just a simple pressure gauge, you know, round gauge. Your pressure switch, now, this is, the, this is the guts of your system. This is the thing that tells your well pump when to come on. And normally, I believe I've been reading there like uh, the, the turn on pressure is like, let's say 20. And the turn off pressure 40 or 30, 50 or 40, 60. I think I've been reading most of them are running a 20 PSI difference between cut off and cut on. And the way this works is, let's say you got water running, okay? You shut off your faucet, your pump is still running, your well pump is still running, and pumping water up into your pressure tank. It's got a, it's got like an inner tube, like a bladder in it. And as your pressure tank fills with water, the pressure builds up, builds up, builds up, and when it reaches a certain point, in this case, I think it maybe it was 50 PSI then the switch would open and the pump would stop. And because you got your check valve, the water has to stay there. It can't pressure, it can't rush back to your uh, pump, okay? Now, you open your faucet again and as water is flowing out the faucet in that pressure tank, that, that pressure is getting lower and lower and lower and lower and then when it gets down to that preset level, in this case maybe it was 30 PSI, then the switch clicks, makes contact, and your well pump kicks in and starts pumping. And then pumps up to, you, you got your water faucet running, okay? And then whenever it catches up and gets to 55 PSI, or 50, or whatever it's set for, it opens up again. If that faucet's still running, then it's going to do the same thing. And whenever the pressure drops down low enough, it's going to kick back in and the pump's going to run. That's why when you're on a well sometimes, if you are, like, let's say you're filling a bathtub or something, you'll see the water's flowing and you can tell it's starting to slow down just a little bit, then all of a sudden it really kicks in again at your well pump kicking in, okay? And then if you shut, up, shut your faucet off, if you're pressure in the system is above that minimum, then this is going to, uh, it's going to stay, it's going to open up, or it's going to be open, and you're not going to have uh, your pump kick in. I know I uh, sound like I'm rattling, rambling, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to explain this best I can. So when the pressure drops down in your tank, your pump kicks on. When your pressure reaches a certain height, your pump kicks off. And that pressure has got to drop to a certain point before it kicks on again. And that's what your pressure switch does. You got wires come in from the, from the power panel and wires going in here from the pump to make the connections and the switch does its thing. It has a stem coming out of the bottom like this and it's screwed onto your, onto your manifold and that water pressure actuates the switch. Your pressure tank, and all these things, Google them and look at images of them, make a lot of sense. Your pressure tank, the bigger a pressure tank you can afford, the better off you are. The bigger the tank, the better off you are because your pump and your switch are not going to cycle as much, okay? But anyway, your pressure tank got a bladder in it, and what happens is it also has on top of how many PSI of air should be in it. So you, you, you inflate it or you make sure you got air pressure in it, 
And what happens then is that water comes in there and that bladder raises up and whenever it builds up the pressure, then it stops. And that bladder is and that bladder has gone up there and compressed that air. And that's what helps push that water back out whenever you open up that faucet. Your spigot, it's nice to have a water spigot right there where you're doing all this work. Uh, it's optional, you don't have to have, but it is very convenient. And it doesn't have to be right there, but it's nice to have it within reach. Like if you're trying to if you're trying to test that switch, it'd be nice to be able to reach over here and turn on a water faucet and, and make sure that water pressure drops and you see the switch work and it kicks in and all that. It's just handy to have. Your pressure relief valve, that's normally found on a, uh, a well manifold. And it's similar to what's on your water heater is if that pressure were to get too high, if this switch was to malfunction and not tell that pump to stop, that pump would keep pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping until you blew something out. Either blew up your pump, blew up your plumbing line, something that would have to fail. And you sure don't want a four or five hundred dollar well pump to fail. Okay? So that pressure relief valve is there just in case the pressure gets too high. And last but not least is all your miscellaneous pipe and fittings. So I hope I've explained this for you okay. I hope you understand it. Uh, you know, freeze this, freeze, you know, pause the, the uh, video, write down all these things, go to your local hardware store, look at them. You know, ask, where's the pressure gauge? You know, ask, where's all your well stuff? And as you look at this, and you think about what I told you about what this stuff does, all of a sudden, it'll start coming together. Google it. It'll help you a lot. But that's the way it works, folks. You got your pump, and it's controlled by your pressure switch. And your switch says, come on, here comes the water. It fills up in the pressure tank. You open your faucet, tank drops down, pressure drops, pump kicks in again, and it just cycles back and forth over and over. That's all there is to it. It's not hard. It's several pieces you've got to put together. But you can do it. Anybody can do this. Okay? Well, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope it helped you. And uh, I hope you weren't too bored with it. Y'all have a wonderful day. And a better tomorrow. Bye.